Okay, so the objectives is of this uh, workshop this morning is to talk a little, give some tips for writing good papers, good abstracts. Okay, you start out with writing for SPE, you write an abstract to get it into a conference. I'll talk a little bit about that first. Second, we're going to talk about, give you some tips to take away about writing papers, how to write a good paper. Okay, I'm not going to get into talking about the grammar, sentence structure, but I'm going to talk about a framework, of how to put a report together, how to put a, a document for SPE, a paper, a manuscript for SPE. Okay. I'll talk about uh, how to good, make good presentations. When you stand up there at the podium, how you to, are you to address the audience, how you will um, not read your slides, but come, up, come with your story and talk about your story and address your slides that way. And then I'll explain, okay, once you get your paper accepted for a conference, how you get it into the peer review process. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit about that process. Okay, so what do engineers do? Can anybody just tell me briefly what do you think engineers do? Well, first of all, what is this picture? What's this a picture of? A funnel? Yep. Well, I call this the communication funnel, okay? And you know what happens when you're pouring liquid in a funnel into a container and that funnel breaks? What happens? The fluid goes out everywhere, okay? Same thing with communication, okay? You break the funnel, everything you have done, all your hard work goes to waste, okay? So, an engineer has comes to the table with this to this funnel with scientific knowledge. He comes with a background in mathematics. He comes to the table with ingenuity, okay? And he develops a process, he develops a technique, and he first then wants to communicate it, okay? Through this communication funnel. And what does he produce? What comes out the other end? Documentation. Documentation for your company. Yep. On that process. And you'll probably make a presentation on it, okay? You'll make a presentation to your peers or your management. Okay, let's talk a little bit about writing papers for SPE. Who do you think this guy is? Typhoon Bobladogli, okay? Some of us, that might be a mouthful. Well, he is a author that wrote a paper in 2005 and presented at this conference. He wrote a paper on mature field development a review, okay? He mentioned he presented this uh, conference in Madrid, Spain. So who is this guy? Have you, has anybody ever read this paper? Okay, one, okay. Well, what's important about this paper? Since 2005, it was downloaded 6,000 times, okay? It's one of the top five of all time for SPE, okay? Of course, the question is, when I first saw this, is I asked the question, why was that? Why did, was that paper downloaded so many times? Okay, well, you've, if you look at the paper, and I highly recommend you read the paper. It's a good paper on field development, okay? It's a good, clear, short title, okay? Clear and to the point. He followed a standard outline. He had a clear writing style. It was an engaging writing style. It was a case history, okay? It's a case history of a lot of fields, of uh, mature developed fields. And it had good references. He had a lot of references. Also, if you're writing for SP, you could be an unknown person. But so were these guys, Mr. Darcy, Mr. Holditch, Mr. Mitchell, okay? Steve Holditch said that I am 100% certain that all the awards and rewards that I've achieved in my career were the result of writing papers and presenting to SPE. And it was the best advertising to my consulting business. And that was Steve Holditch, he was the 2002 SPE president. He wrote more than 70 papers. Okay? So, question is, who are you? Who are you sitting in this room? Okay? You're thinking about writing a paper, or have you already written a paper, and you just want to polish up your skills? You're intelligent. You're knowledgeable. You're knowledgeable of your subject. 
You might be a subject matter expert. You're experienced at what you do. You're willing to share what you've done with other people. And if you share what you've done to the public, you have to, of course, get company approval. And you have something to say, no doubt. This is who you are as an engineer. So why write papers for SPE? Well, there's a difference. You write for a um, company-sponsored conference. You have uh, rigor because you're presenting papers to your peers in SPE. It's an SPE meeting is a meeting versus commercial meetings, commercially organized meetings. There's prestige. It goes into a scientific journal, SPE journals, versus a commercial publication advertisement. Uh, and it gets a lot of exposure. It goes into one Petro, which is globally accessible. And it's your professional obligation. Once you become an engineer, you're professionally obliged to share your results with the public, whether the public be your company or the outside world. And the reason you do that is to help others learn from your experience. And you fulfill the SP code. Once you're an SP member, you have the requirement to share and disseminate knowledge. Again, why write papers for SPE? Well, Excellence in the industry, you share knowledge with the industry, you increase the, uh, the knowledge in the industry and the business. Your paper, once you write it and it goes into one Petro, extends beyond the conference, okay? People come back later, maybe years later, and ask you if you could give them that reference. So not only at the conference do you present it and people don't go away and forget about it, it's picked up later as a reference. So that's what I mean by longevity. And if it's good paper, like Mr. Bob Dogley, it will be picked up lots of times. It preserves your work. If it's a good paper, it's clearly written, a lot of people will read it. A lot of people will be interested in reading it. And it builds your peer network, importantly for you. And enhances your resume. In these days when it's sometimes difficult to find jobs, this is a good thing to have on your resume. Okay. Who benefits? Well, these are the three entities that benefit. There's SPE, there's the industry, and there's your company. Yep. SPE, you, you uh, extend the body of knowledge in the journals. The, industry, the energy industry, you enhance the reputation of the oil and gas industry, increases the knowledge bank in the industry, and it meets the global energy needs from your publishing. And it's a showcase for your company, okay? Your company's proud to send you to these meetings and present papers because it reflects on them, okay? And enhances their reputation and attract, potentially attracts customers. And of course, it benefits you, okay? So that should be clear. Any questions about that? Yes, no, makes sense? Okay. So when it, Benefits you, it enhances your resume, I mentioned that. Your technical legacy, as it goes on past the conference, gains your exposure to the industry. People get to know you through what you've written. It increases your leadership abilities, your skills, okay? A th few uh, guidelines or discussion about One Petro statistics. Does everybody know what One Petro is? Yes? Yes? Okay, good. One Petro, it's the multi-society online library. It has over 125,000 full-length technical papers. 60,000 of those plus, almost half, are SPE papers. Not only are the SPE papers in there, but there's also NACE papers, there are JCPT papers, there's other papers in there that go into One Petro. 2.8 million papers are do were downloaded in 2011. One Petro. 2,500 papers are submitted annually to One Petro. So that's quite a lot of exposure and a lot of papers. Okay. This is a 2010 statistic. It wasn't updated, but I'll show you, give you an idea of the exclusivity of your papers once they are peer reviewed and they get into a journal. First of all, at the 
12,000, almost uh, a little over 12,000 abstracts were submitted in 2010, okay, through conferences, to the journals. Of those, about a quarter of them were presented at the conferences. Next, about a thousand, a third of those were, were peer reviewed, were submitted for peer review. And then 451 papers were published. So that's about 4% of the papers of the abstracts submitted were published. It's pretty exclusive. And that's all if you can write a good convincing abstract to get it into a conference or a journal and it's accepted. So what's the paper path for the SPE? Okay, a lot of the other societies have their own uh, paper process for getting the papers into their journals. I'm just going to show you SPEs. It's, it's pretty easy. It's about seven steps. First of all, there's an event that is scoped out by a program committee. And then it's advertised. And then there's a call for papers. The program committee, like for ATCE, there was a program committee that called for papers back in um, early part of this year. And then there's an abstract submission. Once there's a call for paper, papers, it goes out. Then the, uh, the abstracts are submitted from potential authors. Okay. He sends those in, and then the abstracts are rated by a program committee. Okay. Once the abstracts are rated, if you get selected, then you send a notice from SPE saying you, you are going to present at the uh, conference, and you're given some writing instructions. Okay. You're given a writing, an author kit. Then you submit the paper for the proceedings. Okay, you, you write the manuscript, you write your presentation, and you submit it to, to SBE for, for the proceedings. And then you present the paper at the conference, and then it gets in one Petro. That's the path, pretty simple. So scoping it out all the way to writing and then to one Petro. 